In this Thailand travel guide, we're looking at the best places to stay in Pai. Pai is a small town in the middle of rural northern Thailand. In this video, I'm going to look at the best spots to stay at for the best nightlife, the best nature spots, and the best hotels. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video when I tell you about one of the best hotel experiences I've ever had in Thailand right here in Pai. I'm Jack, and if you'd like to work with me to plan your dream trip to Thailand, please get in touch with me from our website, link below. Before we get started, there's a few things to note about Pai that may affect your decision of where to stay. Number one, Pai is a small town. This means that it's easy to explore by foot, but also that there's not a whole lot to explore within the town itself. Number two, the beauty of Pai lies in its countryside. So you might want to consider staying in somewhere with a more natural setting. Some of the main highlights that I'm talking about are waterfalls, the Pai Canyon, or the hot springs. Three, Pai has some of the most creative hotels in the whole of Thailand. Traditionally, Pai is a backpacker or a hippie town, and there's lots of hotels dedicated specifically to yoga, meditation, or even just stoner hotels. Increasingly though, there are a lot more upscale, fancier hotels to stay at. And number four, Pai has some of the cheapest accommodations in Thailand. So this means that you can either stay here and save a lot of money, or by splashing out a little bit, you can afford somewhere really nice. The first area that I wanna look at is the walking street. Now this is definitely the most popular area to stay, probably because you can walk out your hotel and you got everything right on your doorstep. Walking Street is actually a combination of two streets and they're filled with bars, restaurants, and things to do. At night, a night market comes out and it's one of the better ones I've experienced in Thailand with lots of good food and things to buy. In addition to that, the bus station is right there. So once you arrive in Pai, your hotel is not gonna be far from here. So you get pretty much whatever you want right here on your doorstep. Another benefit is that this area also has the cheapest hotels in town with the average price being 650 baht. So this is an extremely cheap area to stay. In my opinion though, most of the hotels and hostels here are nothing special. Most of them don't even have pools. And so you're probably missing out on some of the better hotels that Pai has to offer. Personally, I wouldn't like to stay this close to Walking Street because I think you miss out on what makes Pai great by staying in the town. Luckily, the next location on the list has the best of both convenience and nature spots. There's an area not too far from Walking Street, just by the river, that has all the benefits of staying nearby the Walking Street, whilst also having a really nice view and amazing nature. In my opinion, it's the best place to stay within the town. The Riverside area has much more interesting hotels. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily fancy. In fact, some of them are just simple wooden huts. However, you're able to step outside your door and there's a river, a beautiful wooden bridge, trees, and hopefully a nice sunrise. There's lots of quaint little coffee shops to enjoy the natural surroundings too. And the best part about staying here is that you're only actually about a five to 10 minute walk from the walking street, meaning you get the best of both worlds because you can wake up in nature and head to the bars in the evening. Hotels here are a little bit more expensive with the average price being about 1,200. However, there are some nicer, more upscale places for around 3,000 baht per night. If you're finding this video useful so far, please consider hitting the like button. I'm trying to be the most informative Thailand travel channel on YouTube. If you like what I'm doing, please hit the like button. Apparently it really helps me out. Now I wanna talk about some of those creative hotels and hostels that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. But before I do that, I wanna explain a little bit about the history of Pai. Pai's history is deeply rooted in its indigenous cultures, primarily the Lahu, Lisu, and Karen tribes, who have inhabited the region for centuries. But during the 1960s and 1970s, something changed. Pai began to attract backpackers from all over the world that were trying to find somewhere more off the beaten path and remote. This attracted the attention of a lot of backpackers and hippies who were drawn to the area for its beautiful landscapes. As time has gone on though, and the popularity of visiting Thailand has grown, tastes have changed, and there's beginning to be a lot more of a modern feel to the area. So why am I giving you this unwarranted history lesson, you might ask? Well, because to take advantage of Pai's backpacker routes, or its much more modern and glamorous locations, you have to venture outside the town a little bit. Because the town is so small, and because it's grown so quickly, the area in the town, there just wasn't enough space to build. So if you venture a little bit outside the town, you can see some of the most creative hotels and hostels that I've ever seen. In one of our stays in Pai, we stayed in this kind of hippie-ish wooden cabin, just a little bit outside the town. This was a really cool place to stay, and in fact, it felt a little bit like camping because you could hear the sounds of nature when you woke up. There's a lot of different accommodations that are styled like this, and some even focus exclusively on yoga or meditation. So if that's what you're into, that might be the perfect place for you. More recently, some more modern and upscale hotels have been built on the outside of town. 
I noticed some of the best hostels that I've ever seen. Some of them look like they've been airdropped in from the more glamorous Cup and Yang of Koh Samui. So you've got some really nice pools that are hosting pool parties right in the middle of a paddy field with a mountain backdrop. The drawback of staying on the outskirts of town is that you can't quite as easily access the town itself. Some of these places are a 10 or 15 minute walk away from the walking street. Now 10 or 15 minutes isn't too far of a walk, however this is Thailand so the roads aren't built for pedestrians. You're going to be walking along the side of a road and at night that's not going to be very well lit so if you're walking back after a couple of drinks it could get a little bit dangerous. You can negate this by renting a scooter and in fact then it'll just be a two or three minute ride into the town. If you need to come back in the evening after a couple of drinks, you can always get a taxi, which shouldn't cost too much. However, you know what it's like when you're trying to haggle for a taxi in the middle of the night. They might try and overcharge you. Looking at all the hotels in Pai is beyond the scope of this video, but Pai is the kind of place where I would spend some time looking and researching some of the hotels because they got some of the nicer ones in Thailand, and you might find something that's just perfect for you even if it is a little bit out of the town. The final part of this video, I want to show you the hotel that I stayed in the last time I visited because it is one of my favorite hotels that I've ever stayed at. One of the best things to do in Pai is to visit the hot springs. The area is renowned for its natural hot springs, which have therapeutic properties and they're just a nice place to chill out in. Now, most people will visit the public hot springs, which is this huge natural bath that you'll spend time in sharing it with other people. And this costs a few hundred baht to enter. However, in the surrounding area, there are private hot spring hotels as well. In the hotel that we stayed at, which I'll link below, there was a private hot spring in each room. And not only that, it was overlooking a river and paddy fields as well as the mountains in the distance. So it was just one of the most beautiful hotels we ever stayed at. The hot springs are, however, located about eight kilometers outside of the town. So it's the least convenient place to stay if you really want to be in the town with its nightlife. It's going to be about a 20 minute drive each way every time you want to get into the town. Now, like I said before, the beauty of Pai lies in its natural surroundings rather than its town. So this isn't quite as big a disadvantage as you would think. Just make sure that you stock up on supplies because you're not going to be able to get them in the middle of the night. You will probably need to rent a scooter to stay here. It's fine getting a taxi to and from, but to explore the areas surrounding there, you're going to want a scooter. Luckily, this area is near some of the main tourist spots in Pai Canyon and some of the waterfalls. If I was exploring Pai for the first time, I would consider spending a night or two within the town, maybe the riverside first, and then booking a night or two in the hot springs. When I'm doing longer trips around Thailand, especially in Northern Thailand, sometimes I like to book a hotel that is out in the countryside somewhere, in a place that feels like a million miles away from anything. This is the kind of place you would never be able to afford if you were traveling in Europe or America. So why not enjoy it here in Thailand where it is affordable? After watching this video, you might want to check out these videos here to explore some of the more off-the-beaten path locations in Northern Thailand.